In unit one, when we take a look at the syllabus, we need to break it down into about these seven key areas. You should have a copy of this in your notes. For each of these sections, I'm going to kind of signpost you as to where you should be focusing your study for each of these topics. So if you have the syllabus printed, use it to go along as we move through the video. And let me start first with scarcity, choice, and opportunity cost. You should be able to define scarcity and the basic economic problem. And that's more or less allocating scarce resources between alternative uses. I've seen this multiple choice come up where you have to pretty much know that definition. And a key part of that was the alternative uses, right? Scarce resources, alternative uses. Second, we go to what is meant by teres paribus. And why do we apply it? You know, why do we have this condition of ceteris paribus? What's the value of it in economic experiments? Third, we're going to go to the three key economic questions, why we need to answer them. What will we produce? How will we produce it? For whom will we produce? To understand why those questions exist and what, why we have to answer them. Understand the characteristics that distinguish the short run, long run, and very long run. Right? If you are not sure what does, you must know that. And finally, how people make decisions at the margin. And that's looking at something like marginal utility, where I will determine whether or not I'm going to eat that next slice of pizza based on how much utility I think the next one will bring me. So stuff like that, decision-making at the margin. It's kind of briefly introduced in this unit, and I believe more of it is discussed in more detail in A2. Then also being able to tell the difference between a positive and normative statement. What I've seen recently on multiple choice papers is they'll give you a statement that is false, that you can prove is wrong. But being right or wrong or being able to prove something correct or incorrect makes it a positive statement. So if it is incorrect, and you can say that it's incorrect, that's a positive statement. The opinions are going to be more the normative statement. So look for that trap where they give you a false statement, which is still positive. The factors of production, you should be able to identify which each of them are, land, labor, capital, enterprise. What are the various rewards to each of them? Uh, from that, go down to specialization. Right? Understand why specialization is beneficial to the worker, the drawbacks to the worker, benefits to the firm, drawbacks to the firm, benefits to a country, and drawbacks to a country. You should be able to do that for each of those categories. And it's not enough just to know about specialization, you should understand the, the division of labor, what that means, and then also using that information to determine what's good and what's bad, given a certain example. Then we have economic systems and the issues of transition. When the issues of transition apply to economies going from planned economies towards the market economies and the issues they face. So understand the characteristics of a market economy on the other end of the spectrum, the characteristics of a planned economy, and then how most economies are mixed. And the key thing here in the multiple choice is to distinguish the role of the market and government in allocating resources or determining prices or the role of the price mechanism and how these interact with these different systems and the roles they play within. Also make sure you can explain the good and bad of each type of system. Whenever you are in an economics class, you may feel as though the teachers think the market system is the better, you know, quote unquote, better system. But for this class, you should know the advantages of a planned economy with regards to, you know, distribution of income and so on, and focus on those benefits that, even though you may not agree with a planned economy on principle, understand what the hypothetical benefits would be. Then finally you have what is the role of enterprise in the modern economy. More or less understanding that entrepreneurs take risk and bring ideas to life and they are the I guess the soul of business right without entrepreneurs and enterprise we, you wouldn't have a business. So that's really what they want you to focus on there. The PPC PPF you're pretty much guaranteed to get a question on this. Understanding the shapes Right, the one that's curved outwards in the straight line, increasing in constant opportunity costs. Understand why it would shift, what kind of factors would cause it to shift outwards or inwards. 
right? Any increase in the quantity or quality of the factors of production should shift it outwards. And any decrease, well, like, of course, would shift it inwards. And think about if you had a PPC for two goods, good A and good B, and there was a new PPC, which started at the same point for good A, the same quantity of good A, but quantity produced increased for good B, right? What would that tell you? Also be able to look at it and determine what is attainable given current resources and unattainable. Determine where productive efficiency can be seen. Think about how unemployment is related to the PPC PPF. Think about society's use of resources with regards to the PPC PPF. Like if we're along the curve, then we're making full use of resources within the curve we have some underutilized resources, and then beyond the curve, it's impossible. Also be able to understand the difference to society when producing capital goods as opposed to consumer goods, what that means to a society in the present day and the future. Looking at money in this unit, you'll need to know about the four functions of money, medium of exchange, store of value, unit of account, and means of deferred payment. And then understand which functions of money would be more difficult during a period of high inflation or instability. If you think about it, medium of exchange in countries where there's rapid inflation, that function may go away or may erode. So you want to think about the impact of inflation. I think specifically you want to focus on inflation affecting the four functions of money or some other you know, economic condition that would impact the functions of money. Second, you should be able to d define what barter is and this concept of double coincidence of wants and how money allows us to get past that and also how money encourages specialization and why bartering doesn't. Distinguish between checks and bank deposits and have a clear understanding of what liquidity is and this concept of near money. And finally, distinguish between merit goods and demerit goods. I'm going to jump to the bottom here. And then understand why imperfect information leads to people over-consuming demerit goods and under-consuming merit goods. Be clear on the characteristics of public goods. Understand what is meant by a free good, and it's not something that doesn't have a price. right? Make sure you understand that free good doesn't mean it's given away for free. There's a different definition behind that. And be very clear on the terms non-rivalrous and non-excludable and how those apply to goods. Also, I didn't mention here, understanding goods, services, needs, wants, uh, the different sectors of the economy, primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors of the economy. Those you must be very clear on. But if you've gone through this presentation and you're comfortable with the questions that you're seeing here and you can answer them, then you're in good shape. If not, stop and try to answer these and that should get you, in general, good standing where you need to be. The diagram you need to know from this is the PPF, PPC, manipulate it, not just shift it in and out, Move one section of it, move another section of it, and understand what conditions you can tell from looking at that graph. You guys cover these things and the key terms I've gone through. You should be okay for Unit 1. I'll see you in Unit 2.